Unreal Engine, okay. Let's see it. Seasonal weather system preview. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another update with Ashes of Creation. Okay. And today is going to be a special one. I right. am joined by three amazing artists. Uh, our lead environment artist, Tristan Snodgrass. Hey, Tristan, how you doing, buddy? Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Now, this is—is is this your first? recording even though you've been with us you've been with us since the beginning six years yeah. ago almost right? guys uh we're doing this thing again with the verdict stuff i'm gonna say right now mods from now on if anybody starts spamming that shit immediately time them out for like a week they're not gonna give the verdict today stop it yeah it's been yeah since 2016 i don't think i've ever actually been triggered it does it triggers me it fucking stream. annoys me i don't like it outside of our our studio tour where i think i think we had one where you were a sriracha bottle yeah. <laughs> for halloween that was... yeah that's correct uh, uh, but yeah i've been mostly behind yeah. the scenes behind all the cinematics and that's the right I, I think our community okay. often asks where nodes three is at because <laughs> Because oh. one time, I remember I was at that, I was at that, we were at that panel at PAX, and people were like, when's Node 3 coming out? And I'm like, Tristan's Correct. back at the studio, and <laughs> he's editing it. Oh, so yeah, I remember that, and I was like, what's he talking about? Okay. <laughs> that's, that's so good, we decided so to So what's this? Uh, no. but, you can skip well, the three or four minutes then? Okay, I'm going to skip ahead. There you go, we're just going to skip. All right, here we go. Um, that is one of the biomes that can experience. So here we go, let's see it. Kind of really traditional season change like what we're accustomed to right that people okay. can see across all four seasons yeah um i mean this is kind of we, we decided to take this to the extremes um so extreme weather you know mm -hmm. everywhere from like harsh snowy blizzardy kind of environment feels to yeah. lush green landscapes so uh we decided to tackle the hardest part first which is making it very very different between seasons yeah this okay is so how does that happen right now some of you uh, saw the Vec and the character creator, but haven't seen it yet in game. This guy uh, looks cool. This guy is just wanting to experience the amazing immersive world that you guys have have mm -hmm. created here. Um, okay, so we are we are in the Riverlands and we are currently in the winter season. So we have obviously a couple so things. This going is on just here. in the winter. With okay. The landscape itself, the the environment itself has changed. Where there's no leaves that are on the trees, there's snow right. that's piling up on the rocks. Um, the ground to, I mean, go over what kind of, what you have to do to transition a biome like the Riverlands into a winter season. Whew. Uh, <laughs> so it's the terrain materials and, uh, you know, there's many, many materials that mm -hmm. can apply to the terrain and each one, you know, accepts snow at a different rate, a different mm -hmm. intensity. And, oh uh, shit! There's the assets that all get kind of the same material function that applies snow. I to really like that lighting. I think that looks really, really good. God damn. The tops of them. Uh, okay. There's a particle effect that uh, moves with the player camera that uh, handles both snow and rain and any kind of precipitation. There's the volume fog that just went away, as we saw, as it cleared up. Okay. The uh, volumetric cloud in the sky has a material that needs to respond to season changes and weather changes. Uh, there's a wind actor. I mean, I, I could keep going for a while. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's a, a lot. Of, that, yeah, there's a lot of stuff say, here. There's a lot of stuff that Holy goes shit. into changing a, a region of the world. <laughs> I bet. Into ooh, is that a little bit of thunder? Oh my oh, god! Oh, take a moment and just uh, enjoy the view. Oh, is this okay? So right now we're transitioning into like a storm as well as the climate. This has been kind of sped up, right, for to showcase the different season transitions. Wow. Correct. Yes. So right now we're getting some rain, which will usher in springtime. And so Holy shit. Look at this. Right oh Holy snow. fucking Snow's shit. Mm -hmm. snow. This is unbelievable. And now we've added some additional particle effects. Oh, with wow. The, with the, They've got butterflies uh, even. Uh, the butterflies. I love and the that. Bees and the insects. Yep. And in addition, it's like wow. the, all the leaves now have grown on. There's a oh, bunch yeah. of flowers that are present. James, talk it's to me a little bit about uh, kind of how you're determining the flowers that are appropriate for each season. Yeah. Yeah, um, so... Oh, the little mushrooms. The for setting this up was 
essentially making four I wonder if you can pick those up one every season and um, we kind of started with Wales as like a reference point okay um, my own my own country yeah. <laughs> oh I Wales, thought he meant Wales, actual Wales. Wales. Wales yeah, yeah. Wales, oh I thought you were saying well technically both are <laughs> yeah, both are relevant to, to you Tristan because not only uh, do, are you okay. our lead environment artist but you also are a very avid professional environment film guy right you I've seen some of your stuff is unbelievable yeah, um, uh, outside of this kind of stuff, I tend to uh, spend my time filming nature, so it's kind of a appropriate. How often? Uh, how often do you give that to the environment team as reference material? Uh, not often yet, but I'll be visiting Wales next week, so nice. I'll be taking plenty of. Photos this is for incredible. <laughs> this is no joke. Tristan got right up into the eyeball. Yeah, I really like the way whale. this looks, it's man. This right is cool. That was so cool, dude. That was, that Holy was fucking crazy. shit! Okay, I've noticed yeah. that the that the. Animals have changed. The ambient sound yeah. has changed, and Cat uh, has done an amazing job with the ambience and in, in the Riverlands biome. Wow! I feel like I am here, and not only that, but also kept it adapted. So, while classic should been released, yeah, well, right, yeah. But there'd be no uh, I think we also finder. actually missed the winter bear back in the day, or back in the winters at biome. But that's okay. We, oh. we can we'll see Holy another one. Shit, more. Man. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but this is really nice. Video yeah, quality, Max. Let me do. I'm sorry. I think we kind of cut you off. No, that's oh, fair. Uh, yes, it is. If you want to continue uh, talking about how you went about uh, the art process for this. Oh yeah, no, it's just okay. you know iterative, like all art is, and uh, yeah, this is really really nice. Really it's not uh, okay. All right, all right. I'll swap it over. Worked really closely together to try to homogenize everything for seasons um oh wow actually you know what that does look a lot better I don't, there's not much else to say it kind of can holy see shit <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just, true do the yeah. flowers bloom at a particular time of year they do it's already yeah. going to be compressed down no, but it will um, look slightly yeah, better for you guys will, you know decay and die in the fall and turn colors and god damn the animals like kieran right there will shift based on the type the time of the year oh, i love um, the glow on the, the little deer animals. looks nice too mm -hmm. good job yeah i suppose the moody's in yeah, like uh, some of the particles <laughs> about like the hair is like not yeah, ideal, we'll but it looks cool. In real time later on. That's right. Yeah. So, so part of you know the relevance of this, you know, not just from a beautiful aesthetic perspective uh -huh. here, but what makes it so unique is the dynamic element of these seasons and the yeah. weather systems changing to the behavior actions of the player. Right. So how does that you know, work? Part of the triggers that can create seasonal change is yeah. not just time related for each of our biomes, but they are also indicated by events that occur on the server, whether that be certain raid bosses forming or a relic being acquired uh, by yeah. a particular node and being activated um, to change okay. potentially the weather out of a winter state into a spring state. And the reason why a node might have interest in doing that, of course, is because weather and, and the uh, seasons also affect skills and abilities. They affect crops and gatherables vehicles and mounts ship. wow holy fucking shit that's insane uh one one thing is i hope they increase the draw distance or the ability to increase the draw distance into like open fields so it doesn't look like this doesn't look like unreal 5 and that looks like unreal 2 that's Oops. really nice uh creatures and loot tables change their behaviors might uh -huh. change resistances and weaknesses or 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 Synergies might be relevant in yeah, yeah. seasons or weather systems. Targeting might change. The AOE radius might grow for a fire effect if you're in the middle of summer, or it might wow. shrink if you're in the middle of a storm. That's crazy. Um, you know the. Uh, so you could like wait until it's raining or something like that to fight like a uh, a dragon. That sounds really cool. So much that goes into this system, and that's why you guys really spent a lot of time like Zelda, I didn't making that. sure that the environment reflects both at the quality we mm -hmm. want and isn't just kind of an afterthought weather system. Because a lot of games that I've played, you know, you get just the visual effects kind of playing, and you get some rain or you get some yeah, snow. Yeah, yeah. But what what we've seen here in that transition from winter to to spring was significant and it persists and each of these zones exists in these different states at different times across different servers i saw those those birds just fly by and it's right yeah that. sure <laughs> yeah, was, like what was that this is great I expect that um I yeah i mean this is definitely holy one shit of the more man uh, weather biomes i guess you could say in terms of seasons but we will be taking things a little weird with some of the other biomes as well 
Yeah, I mean, that right there, like, if you just cut and just, like, look at that frame, this looks very, very good. Like, I'm gonna be honest, like, this looks extremely, really, really, really fucking good. Like, amazing good. Oh, I Here you're gonna see, it. yeah, I think there's fall coming. Yeah, okay. shit in the fall. Oh, I see the leaves starting mm -hmm. to spawn. Oh my gosh, and the little dust devil. Oh, that looks great. Oh boy. That's cool. Oh, I love it. I, I want to watch that again. Actually, it's just happening over and over. Wow, look at the colors. That's great. Colors. That's the, my favorite part about shit, it. It's just the colors. Look at that it shit, really dude. It nailed on the color change, but I think we pulled it off. Yeah, that is uh, amazing. I think you guys more than pulled it off. <laughs> Yeah, imagine, like, bro, imagine how crazy it's going to be if this game actually comes out. Like, that's the thing, is that a lot of people, I, I feel like only the most cynical of cynical people can look at this and say, like, oh, this isn't, like, I mean, this is, this is cool. Like, this is, this is fucking cool. I think it's awesome, personally. Only the most cynical people can say that this doesn't look cool, but there's a lot of people that are worried that it's just way too ambitious. You know, it's got a release date of 2043, you know? It's great. I love Showed it. a very early version of this uh, to the entire company, but was maybe like uh -huh. three weeks, four weeks ago. Oh, there was people that, that were like tree. crying practically. Yeah, that I, I mean, I'm watching the updates every week, every day, actually. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I just keep getting like goosebumps watching this thinking and, and again just to reiterate these trans and I'm sure I've already said this on the stream <laughs> which is tomorrow um, <laughs> but these transitions are sped up in That's order good. to demonstrate so people can see what's you know, going on what that move for the world looks like yeah I want to see another we another weather seasons transition. exist on a weekly basis unless they're event yeah. driven or have other triggers right they might last longer if you don't deal with the dragon or if you do or if you right. keep that relic active oh wait um, Bro, look, there's but actually a dragon these, out there. These on a cycle, on Holy a, on a shit. cyclical perspective, as a normal season transition might He's be, just chilling. exist within a one-week time frame, right? And then it transitions over That's a cool. period of hours. Um, but right now you're seeing it sped up over the course of 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, correct. Um, I mean, in yeah, there time, he is. He's it's just going to be chilling. almost unnoticeable to the naked eye, you know, like, kind of naturally how it is uh, in real life uh, my biggest worry about this game to be honest with you is core movement functionality and combat yep if they nail the core movement functionality and combat because the combat in the original tech alpha was kind of floaty it wasn't like super like it wasn't super clean and visceral in the same way that like uh, uh, elden ring is or even new world or, or wow is it was not that great. And so that's the main thing, that if they can nail that, this game is going to be fucking massive. Yes. We're not going to do it over the course of the year, of course, but, you know, mm -hmm. a couple hours, maybe half a day. Oh, is that um, a dragon? Yeah, it is a that's dragon. That's so cool. Oh, oh, oh. You might want to take it. Which boss cautiously. is that? Oh, man, it's starting to snow. Ice dragon? But yeah. Oh, look at so, I love that. Mm -hmm. So the weather events will usher in the different seasons as well. So you'll you'll know when the new season is going to change, um, just based on the weather that's happening. But yep. to the naked eye, you're not really going to see Preach it happening. Social contract. I'll Obviously, watch that. This is just a a very visual demonstration of what's mm -hmm. available and how we can work with it. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. There's the bears. The bears. God damn, man. <laughs> oh, that guy's probably cold right now. God yeah, fucking is, damn, that is crazy. <laughs> I love the... I Holy love, uh, fucking the shit, dude. Underneath the bears. And they've got, like, the, the grand <laughs> floating so platforms. They're yeah, currently planning with weather to have... Like, that is so cool. Rain and snow be kind of a thing where it snows more often in the winter. And, Makes sense. You know, rains more often in the winter in some other places. And uh, basically leveraging some of the new features of Unreal Engine, like... Uh, the, being able to sa sample the yeah. whole distance field and the material to be able to have the snow accumulate in the crevices of objects as you know as the summer as summer comes on and melts away the snow it melts mm -hmm. in the crevices last or if it starts to snow then it kind of accumulates in the you know outer areas first and the, the crevices fill in later kind of thing or, uh, even, or even saturates so too. it's just like little stuff like that that people can do i think that's fucking great man i really do because it's all these kinds of little things that make the world feel like it's actually living and breathing. One of the big things that I really like about this is the fact that they have the dragon flying around. 
And the reason for that is it creates scope. It's like whenever you're like level 20 or 30 and you're questing and you see that big boy flying around up above you, you know that one day you might get him. You know, I think it's one of the most important things to have like these end game badass bosses that people can see very early on. So they can kind of put into perspective where they are in the game and where they're trying to get to, right? Whether it's the Fell Reaver, whether it's Lethon and Duskwood, whether it's, uh, I'm trying to think of some more examples. I think those are two of the obvious ones. Yeah, just different stuff like that. It's great. Yeah. Earth, well, it melts, you know. The tree right. sentinel. It's so soggy. Not really, oh, but this yeah. this looks great. A little bit. It looks like the, even the ground is getting Holy wet. Holy fuck. I can hear the footsteps change to the water. <laughs> Bro, I, so I love this aesthetic, yeah, well, I mean, man. One of the things that makes the, you know, a world come alive. This is some straight just... up fucking Viking Norway shit. Storm? Look at this. It did. My it hat did. is going crazy. Oh, wow. But yeah, you know, like all the elements coming together really sell it. Like, you know, you can take away. That's insane. It just kind of falls apart. Like, no wind. The life or the environment just oh, doesn't Oh, wow. Alive, but, so that's. You know, add some wind and suddenly. That's like spring, I guess. Oh, this is beautiful, guys. Holy fucking shit, yeah, man. Yeah, this is unbelievable. One of the things that is huge about this season system and how it affects crops and, and the gatherables There's a the boat. Game is the impact it will have on the economy, right? Um, when a particular area no longer is capable for a week's period of time or even potentially longer uh -huh. of producing a certain type of crop or harvestable, yeah. and that has to change across the world regionally. Now the transit system of those materials, of those gatherables, they become more relevant and they're subject to potential risk and the prices might go up in certain areas. It is something that is actually very instrumental in the overall design of the economy in the game. Speaking of economy, are those two merchant ships? <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows? Like, maybe the strait opens up. I think that also having stuff like this, like having ships sailing around and just like one thing that WoW does really well is it creates the feel of a real living, breathing world where you have NPCs patrolling around, moving around, interacting with each other and stuff like that. That is so fucking important to have because it just makes it feel like the game is actually alive and it's not just a bunch of placed assets that are just waiting for you to react to them, you know? Yeah, they're able to move transport goods a little faster. Right. We're playing with the idea of freezing over rivers and things, but yeah. the, the implications, it opens up a lot of can of worms. Okay. Someone could get trapped under the ice. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll figure it out if it's possible. I, I think you should trap them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, try or, and shoot Or even them. also something that's very easily done that we've talked about since 2017. And such a big mm -hmm. component of this system coming to life. a long time ago. It was before I was following it. That it's at. I mean, like, again, I, I say this. I haven't seen this really in any other game let alone MMORPG, mm -hmm. where seasons impact so much of the design. Um, and part of that also, again, on the economy front, is you might have a mountain pass. And during winter, that mountain pass is always closed. And so the trade route... Bro, like, that's some straight-up fucking Lord of the Rings shit. That's some straight-up Lord of the Rings shit, man. Remember that in Fellowship? And they couldn't go up there, so they gotta go under the mountain, into the mines of Moria. Holy fuck. It'll never happen? It's on land. Change. Yeah, but what if it does? Um, and that's something that... But what if it does, though? ...can not only exist on a cyclical like maybe. level, but also dynamically based on player activity. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that that is a very big difference. I mean, you know, can I play with the wind? Can I help those ships out a little bit? Yeah, that is yeah, crazy. I mean, we, we definitely gave Steven some... Uh, God mode controls here to demonstrate some more of the system. Cheating. Oh. Real time oh. way. Oh. As he in some Let thunder. there be rain. <laughs> wow. Look at this. This is great. I love how the distance visibility changes and the night, the kind of. I like how the draw distance isn't that much different. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to sink the boats with all that water. I know. <laughs> One thing that this is like a personal opinion. Maybe I, I'm, I'm wrong on this. You know what my favorite maps in PUBG were? Whenever you would, you would zone in and it was fog. And you could only see to like right here. I loved also whenever they had like the, uh, it was like the, uh, the Arathi Basin Blizzard thing. 
I would love if they had like a really, really foggy version. Like that would be super fucking cool. And it sounds weird because like, usually I hate that stuff in games, but like in PUBG, it was so fucking good. I loved it, man. Yeah, I forgot my bad guys. <laughs> oh no, no, yeah, it was good. so they good. Need a fresh water anyway, so. Oh, can I play? Let me dial up the wind a little bit. Make it a little yeah. bit crazier. Oh, I love the mm -hmm. grass movement. This is yeah, that looks crazy. really nice. Look at my hair or my hat is mm -hmm. going wild. <laughs> I love the cloth physics too. <laughs> the fact that like the Unreal Engine can like obviously it registers like wind that comes from a certain direction. And they have like assets in here that interact with the wind. So like for example, like the, the little feathers interact with the wind. Uh this little ribbon here interacts with the wind. Uh the grass here interacts with the wind. That is incredible. As then when the sun hits the grass when it's windy, it looks really cool. Let me do that. I, I have a, I have some god mm -hmm. controls that they gave me for this demonstration. Okay, so let's let see it. Let me turn the rain off. Yep. And turn on maybe the wind by itself. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh look at the like wave movement across the grass. How did you get that to occur? So like one opinion I have is like the draw distance, it makes it look more artificial whenever there's no grass over there. You see what I'm saying? Because like you can clearly see like there's a line for the draw distance in front of the character. Like if if they can fix that and like have that ready, and like it might just be a technical limitation or something like that. But if they can make that less pronounced, holy fuck, this would look amazing. So there's it's a probably adjustable. Function. Yeah, forty nine. <laughs> that could be. We've got it both materials and in blueprints, so that mm -hmm. eventually later it needs to be converted to C plus plus because it's like three hundred times faster when it goes in C plus <laughs> plus. But basically, the same function is duplicated in two places. So we have it in the materials that um, uh -huh. generates the noise in ripples that goes across the player, and in the program, the CPU side of things, the very the value of the wind at the player location gets sent to the audio system. So the wind picks up oh. the audio. Uh, oh wow! Of, I want to uh, see so more fall. Wave of, uh, winds, uh, Holy the fucking I'm shit! Just going through, I'm going through the seasons like uh, oh, I just did a quick transition for the for the see? audience to see how much control I have oh, right now. Oh my god! <laughs> Yeah, so we gave T Steven a, a sped up timeline. It's of lit. The so autumn, yeah, I want to see autumn. Wanna, there it is. Get a little crazy with it. But oh yeah, I see that. Wow. So from I hope they show more of it. I can pause it. Yep. So each day, I guess inside I of the cycle feel. is going to be more out. of like one out. transition. That is incredible, man. Let's Holy shit. Snow. Oh yeah. Oh again, look at that. I love the fog. And the effects now start kicking off the ground. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so everything's built into the system with the sense that like they can change dynamically. Like yeah, you're not gonna get that gust of wind uh, in certain locations when you know it's summer, but when it's winter. When we can see it, apparently we should watch this. I'm sure they'll probably quick. fix it. Can we do that? So go to the ones actually turn around. And My start. opinion on this is that seasons should either uh, be the same as they are in real life. Or there should only be two or three cycles per year. So, like, for example, like, let, let's say there's three cycles. Each month would be a different season. Like, I, I would like that because, like, if seasons are, like, once a week, and, like, each week is one season, then I feel like they're so transient that you don't really get to look forward and be excited for the one that's going to come after that. You know, I, I think that uh, that one season a week is too, it's way too fast, and I feel like it starts to feel gamey. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it feels gamey. It's like, oh, well, this is like more of like a, it, it's like, oh, I'm going to wait for three weeks, and then, like, I think also the faster you have the seasons come together, the more you're going to have people that don't really, like, feel the economy effects of the seasons. Because, like, for example, in WoW, did you guys ever buy a lot of snowballs in, like, the winter event in, like, Burning Crusade and then save them to sell in July? Like, that's what I did. And, um... You would do that and make these plans like long term, and I think they were more fulfilling that way. Yeah, of course, right? Everybody did that. That's why I never really made any money with it. Oh. The view in the background, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, that's follow a good, some good of the call. ones down there. Call. Let me go oh, someone hates winter. What if someone hates guns? Hopefully, they, they shouldn't play Call of Duty. Play oh, nice. Karen, my little friends. There they are. 
All right, I need you guys in the shot. Uh -huh. I need you guys to step over here. I just, hey, can you move to the left, please? We need a feeding system where you can just like walk up and like pull it out your hand. <laughs> or some and, like, type of husbandry. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Pull out your hand. Yeah, and eat out of your just hand. Just a second. Yeah. Yes. All right. Let me grab Jinsey did a great job on those guys. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah these are go. fantastic models. Watch the Kieran change. Oh, look at them. They change oh, yeah. with the seasons. That was fun for me to figure out. It's like the ancients. Oh, that looks good. so good, James. Oh my god. See, like, you know, Look at that. Original cinematic that I, I believe it's like the wandering ancient. We'll be showing during the live stream. Like, That's crazy. We, you know, talked about seasons in our Kickstarter. Um, yes. Those were just dissolves between environments that we did in post production. I wonder if they'll show like really we're heavy doing the same rain. Same thing in our new cinematic, but I, yeah. I think like Morningdale rain in New World is probably one of the best rain effects I've ever seen in like an MMO. I love the Morningdale rain in New World. It's fucking phenomenal. So I, I hope they have something that's very similar to that. No, it's actually happening real time. There's no trickery, no fakery. It's and then all, seeing yeah, the dragons all... fucking shadow, dude. Beautiful. That's so badass. I love it. Let me, uh... This is the major leaks now. Look at Heck this. Yeah. I love it. Oh uh, my god. Okay, tell me a little bit about the oh um, my god the weather effects and i know that the effects team isn't here right now but we might be getting some insight to their their work next that is month nuts, maybe on man. stream we'll see um those effect pvp i don't know also have the the effects interacting with the environment like i was seeing some streams of mm -hmm. uh rain that was coming down that adrian did some work yeah on, um on some of the portcullises yeah there's a is this really individual particle effect 2043 some of these assets that Kind of response to changes in weather that are looking realistically like, probably you know, two rain years. collecting in areas or uh, like sheeting off of probably two years. flat surfaces if you go underneath like a tunnel or something you see it dripping more intensely. Um, I think that we'll like I really that, like the, but, um, the worst case. Like obviously the the patches of snow look kind of um, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, uh, they, they look kind of uh, artificial. Uh, whereas everything else, I think, looks much more realistic. And, and I think that's probably something they could work on. But uh, just in general, I, I really like how it exists inside of the season changes, too. I think we'll have a tool to auto-place that. God but, damn, uh, man. Worst case, we can have it be hand-placed. Holy shit, this yeah, is cool. It looks pretty cool. I love this. Same thing that. with the dust devils, the butterflies, the bees, the leaves. The leaves. I wonder if they're going to have tornadoes. Just like a straight up fucking tornado that's just coming through the entire zone. And it's like, remember back in Cataclysm, whenever Deathwing would show up at a zone and just fucking set everybody up on fire? God damn, that would be badass. Like Dark Shore? Yeah. But moving around. Okay, and that's formulaic. Playing with this wind a little bit. I think I that that's also treatment. another really important thing with having these like artificial systems like this is like a lot of times the proc gen, which is like the pre it's procedural generation for the game. A lot of times, whenever that happens, it's never really as good as like as the developers think it is. It's like really you're going through like five or six different variables and players that go through the proc gen are going to experience everything that there is to experience within like maybe a couple of weeks. So it's really important to add in as many variables and possibilities as you can to make it to where it actually truly does feel organic and it's not just kind of a roller coaster or an on rails experience. This is cool. You know, it's it's so funny. A in tsunami? a lot of the games that I played, Ooh. the wind effects can either look really, really good, yeah, or they can look really, really bad, <laughs> and usually not much in between. But yeah. but I like how our trees. You have this variance in movement from the trunk itself. I think also like the trees. It's again like kind of what I said before. Since the draw distance is so far out, you can clearly tell that these trees don't have the same level of detail in them that like this rock has in it. Or even that tree has in it. So like making sure that you can get a good view at the world and nothing is like compressed down if you have a good enough computer, I think is really important to creating that like super immersive experience. Because the moment that you create like draw distances and this kind of stuff, you turn it into like a artificial experience. Obviously, performance has to come before anything. 
However, I think that for people that want to turn it off and want to have that, and I think it should be a goal to make it to where as many people as possible can turn it off. Gameplay comes before that. To Way the before that. I'm purely talking aesthetics. That? We actually had to home roll our own solution. So the home trees roll. were made in a program called Speechy. And we had that. a little bit of trouble getting the speed tree nodes and uh, the materials for Holy the shit. to function correctly. So we just made our Steven own. Steven and Chat, what up, Steven? Now. Um, but yeah, we just kind of take the tree position and We're a them, lot man. of this information cool. about the tree is encoded to the uh, UV coordinates. There's about uh -huh. seven or eight you know, UV coordinate spaces. Uh, and each one has like, you know, is it a leaf? Is it a frond or branch? How far down the branch is it? Mm -hmm. and we just use that data to drive a bunch of rotations. Um, some of the information encoded in the UV coordinates is what's the pivot point of this branch? So I just kind of rotate around that branch. Yeah, that looks great. That works really, looks really cool. <laughs> I love that. And then there another thing we we're talking about was having like wetness effects and snow pile up on you know rocks and buildings and stuff. Yeah, that's one thing we're doing for wetness of the terrain. If you look at the dirt path as it gets wetter, and I'm not sure how visible this is because it also gets cloudy and dark. How does this work? Maybe they can stream compression. But as it gets wet, we use the height element of the terrain materials to figure out where puddles should form. And oh, here's the rain. It should. Okay, should here. See it. Yeah, it I was do wondering it so much about this. on the slope, so it might uh, look more visible on a flat terrain. There we go, right here. I see it there. Yeah, it, at the lower areas of the terrain height, it gets kind of glossy like puddles. Oh, wow. Oh, that looks great. And a similar thing for snow. Uh, as the snow is melting, it Yeah, it I really like or it, it, that, it, like, this, this, like, color theme and everything reminds me a lot of, uh, Stormheim in uh, in Legion, and that was like one of my favorite zones aesthetically. It was my favorite zone aesthetically in Legion. I thought it was amazing. Like it's got the same color theme. It's so fucking good. It's removed from the areas of mm -hmm. uh, where there's high material ambient occlusion. Think about constant wind noise. It removes I think it'd be cool it if you could put on a helmet and get it turned off. Uh, last, like a different helmet, like that would cover your ears, would turn off the wind sound. Um. Or, or a muffle it. To snow. I want to. I want to talk a little bit about. I don't know if that even possible. Here. Yeah. So uh, I was going to say we also had our other artists working I like on some modular sets and yeah. various things that we can use to construct a lot of the ancient ruins mm -hmm. of the Ala race that were once here in Vera before the, the. How would you describe it? The event where everyone left. Yeah. I, I think. Like, let me go back for the, the like that looks fucking crazy good like that's some straight up lord of the Rings shit you've got like the sun in the background of like the floating rock with the dragon flying on top of it that is just oh my god like whenever people are talking about how they want fantasy games this is what they're thinking about how would you describe it? The event that's so the cool. Left? The uh, Exodus, the apocalypse, the, Exodus, the right. end of the world. Yep. Wait, yeah. hold on. Wait a minute. What's what is this? this? Oh, this is an I example saw. of like obstructions. Yeah. So, and then oh. the sign, you might not be able to access certain areas. And Wait a minute. But there's something there. Open. Open for me. I command you. So he's gonna, yeah, change it. You might wanna. Can they, like, oh, yeah, there it goes. Epic yes, melt. Of, oh, there's a oh door. Oh, Why is wow. It's right in there. I don't know. What Holy is going shit. on? Wait a minute. It's like. Oh, my God. In there, to be fair. Hold on. You might have to change yeah. the weather here. We might need he's to gonna go meet Jesus. Reveal yourself, Snow. I command you to stop. <laughs> wow. I, I feel like there is. Uh, sometimes during certain seasons. What is my... that? Oh, oh, no. oh my God! Oh, that? it's a sandal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. That is so awesome. Who did put this? That a in? new achievement. Uh, yeah, that it's was the island her, heart. Yeah. Curtis Howe. She. Uh, oh my God. Hal. I'll break that out real quick for you with a little, nice little inscribed S there. That, that looks so really cool. cool. Oh, that's. 
I think the, the lighting and sandal. stuff like that, I the inversion sure is like really, really like nice. I, I found my sandal. <laughs> but wait, to be fair, it's missing. One. Oh, is it? Is okay. there another one? There's, there's two. The sandals come in pairs. So. Wait a minute. I assume. I'm assuming it's up at the top, uh, maybe. Where is this? Pillar. Where is this other? Oh, can I? Can I? Is this like a little? Uh, is it a jumping little, puzzle? Uh, maybe. Jump puzzle. Little jump, little jump maybe. puzzle for you. Little jump puzzle. All right. Oh fuck! Wow. Let me up. Let me up, sir. Bro, the one thing, not the one thing, there's a lot of things New World did right. Climbing, uh, what's that fucking, uh, is it, it's called Gen, I don't think it's called Genesis. What the fuck is it called? That middle area in Eden Grove? What, what's that place called? Like that giant tower. Like climbing that tower and getting all the way up to the peak of it is like, in my opinion, the c malevolence. Yeah, there you go. It's malevolence. Climbing the top of that giant tower and like kind of, uh, you know, like going over the rocks and jumping over like the edges and shit like that. It is so fucking cool. And I'm really glad they're adding, uh, they're adding it into this game too. Like New World, like that, in my opinion, was like peak New World world building. It is like that there. Just just a, loot another stash. So. Hey, oh, there we go. Okay. We kill I'm a boss that despawns randomly too. Oh no, I think it's your left. Can't forget about that. You can get oh. Either way. Oh. oh my oh. god! Ah, oh, just barely. So they've got the I same climbing mechanisms, kind of that New teeth. World does. Let me up here. Oh, or if you get close enough, and you can also Sorry. fall off and then Let's hang back yeah, on. Right Holy shit! Okay. Lumen's kicking in. I found it. Wow. I think I have found it. There it is. Oh, there you go. My other sandal. There it is. Collector's editions. Yes. Yeah, speed run. <laughs> oh, I love it. That is so cool. That is awesome. Okay. Well, I have to say, back when we talked about mm -hmm. seasonal changes and weather systems, yeah, and all of these things being interconnected with with design elements and systems in the game, I remember that we showed off the kind of you know very early prototyping that we were doing back yeah, in like yeah. 2017. And we probably actually just showed that on the stream. Lol. Um, but... <laughs> There's more uh, to this. I, I never thought that it would come to this level of quality. Yeah. I didn't fact, either. Like, I, 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 I think this is really nice. This kind of seasonal tech <laughs> back before the Kickstarter even happened, I think uh, I was a little, a little intimidated myself. But right. Then, yeah, the prototype that we, that we did. I, I think that this is one of the things that Whenever they were talking about this, about like a year ago or so, I, I think like this is one of the first time I remember hearing about it, I, I believe, there were a lot of people that thought that this wasn't going to happen. And to be honest, I think Unreal 5 made it to where like, if there were any doubts about something that wasn't going to happen, I feel like it guaranteed will happen. You, you know what I mean? And so I was one of them, yeah. And, and like, the thing is that I, I feel like whenever... Yeah, Unreal became real. Yeah, it, that there it is. And so, like, at this point, I feel like if they say they're going to do something with, like, the world in terms of, like, the design of it, I feel like Unreal 5 will... will, will it's it's going to happen. Like, it's probably going to happen. Like, this, in my opinion, I, I find this to be really, really cool. Like, I actually think this is incredibly good. Like, that was... There were significant challenges. It's way different than what we've yeah, seen before? Yeah. That possible. But this is next level. Oh, yeah. 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 Big shout out to uh, James and Hal and Brian for cranking out all the biome stuff. Yeah, this is nuts. Brandon and Adam for cranking Photo out the amazing I did. ruins. Um, and Scott for the new trees, too. Scott, yeah. Scott Allen, our new foliage go to guy, is the one that cranked out some of these pretty epic uh, the ash trees. That's yeah, so cool. Stuff. Don't Very mind developed. my god powers. I have god powers. This is not powers you will have, players. This is just what I can do. <laughs> and also, not that to is uh, cool. forget, uh, Hans, our new landscape master, mm -hmm. he's uh, took a swing at this landscape for us and did us some of the epic views. So, mm -hmm. all around uh, an amazing job. Watch the trailer as well. Yeah, we were we were all pretty what intimidated trailer? when we were having the initial meetings to start working on this, but you know, yep. everyone pulled together and. Yeah, what trailer hey, is this? You guys really are a dynamite team. Yeah, you guys is this the only a, a tremendous second AMC video? Yeah, job. I'll watch it. After I this. think the community will let you. Hear so, um, what was this to me for? Like, uh, let me read that again. 
Oh, uh, fuck. I actually totally fucking forgot what people were going to say. Yeah. Oh, oh, any other MMO that uses Unreal 5? As far as I know, there is no other MMO that uses Unreal 5. Um... I don't think so. This in chat. Um, that this is a next level presentation for seasons and weather and for an environment. Really, yeah, in yeah. MMO that I've ever seen. And not to forget, of course, like, you know, that's not just us, but also, you know, the entire effects team, our new audio artist, yes. uh, Kat, and, you know, the character team for getting that cloth physics and all the other goodness going. So. Mm -hmm. And 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 this is a work in progress still. This is, this is just, nowhere near go. complete. This is actually still... The great thing about our development that I that I personally love is that we invite the community to watch, right? And over the years, they can go back and they can look on our YouTube and they can see the quality of art yeah. continue to improve over time, right? And that's the cool thing about art is that it's never really finished. Like there is always elements you will be tweaking and you will be touching up and you will be taking second third fourth tenth passes on even as yeah, the game I, I think also like even as i hope he says even as the game's out right game launches and we go through yeah that was literally what i was gonna say is like yeah making sure that the game remains uh relevant making sure that the game remains as uh as as up to date as possible i think is really important and you could have like an engine like Unreal 5 that make that much more possible than let's say what WoW is built off of. Or, or Lost Art. Like these are things that, that art continually to improves upon, uses new technologies mm -hmm. for. I mean, that's, you guys are the masters so of future the future. Yeah, 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 exactly. Future yeah. Game. Game is, that's a really good way just, to say it. Go ahead. No. Because okay. Unreal 6 so, like, probably won't be out for, like, at least five more years. This, I think they'll be like, wow, this one looks great, but it could be maybe slightly better in this area. They'll have a screenshot or video to show us, you know, wrapped up on a different way to look yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah. Just, we just leverage the hive mind of ten? all humanity. You think so, Tim? We're and we're just <laughs> getting the best of everything. It's the really hive good. mind, I like that. <laughs> okay, That's we'll see. cool. Well, we are going to go back to stream, but everybody, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I did. This, this is incredible. The best is still yet to come because this is stuff that we are constantly working on, as we said. And we have some amazing artists at Intrepid. And by the way, we Holy are hiring. Shit, so man. if you have any favorite this is devs crazy. or projects out there that you know of, please send them our way, IntrepidStudios.com. Um, yeah, I this, really like this a lot. I cannot express enough just how excited I am to live inside of Vera. And to be I honest, like uh, if Unreal 5 can came out whenever i was a kid i probably would have gone into game development like i'm not even kidding like because I, I uh you guys I, I told this a couple of times right but like i taught myself how to do like uh animation and everything on like flash whenever i was like 11 and like 12 years old and i, I got really 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 into it and uh like it was something i i really liked a lot it's not too late yeah it's just that like I feel like growing up doing it, I would have had, like, just such a, like, crazy fucking passion for it. And, and like, now, like, I feel like my priorities in life are a little bit different, etc. But just seeing this is just so fucking cool, man. It's so fucking cool because I guarantee you, like, if I saw this whenever I was a kid, I would have gone hard as a motherfucker on it. I think that our community uh, is chomping at the bits to live there with me. Uh, oh, yeah. And all yeah, this us. is so it cool. Is, um, yeah. I was just going to say, like, I, I mean, we could probably just sit here and let this run for 10 hours straight and oh, put it on YouTube totally and do that. monetize it or something like that. Uh, I mean, monetize it? What? <laughs> no, 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 yeah, just, there you <laughs> go. You know, I was thinking like a capitalist. I like it. Um, oh, my God. That's, that's a winner. Hilarious. We were talking about it today, how we like just left this running yesterday after one of our tests, and we came back to the conference room, and it was still running, and it was still windy, and it was mm -hmm. perfect. It was just like, oh, wow, it's you know, still alive oh, and running. Absolutely. I constantly get distracted by... <laughs> just staring. <laughs> I'm just, oh, yeah, it should be working. It's actually kind of, um, yeah, it's calming, and, you know... Yeah, it is. Great to just, when you're working, just sit there and This is what I want to see. Minutes. Really I is. literally have this exact scene that. on my computer desktop right now. Just running. <laughs> Who needs to go outside when you can go to Vera? <laughs> that is so Absolutely. nice, man. Look at that. Love it. All right, guys. We are going to see you crazy. guys back on stream. Uh, Tristan, James, Brian, thanks for hanging out with me and explaining your really cool, amazing job uh, we'll of making see. Vera a place that we all want to live in. 
Um, I cannot express enough how much I appreciate oh the work that you guys do to make. You play a wizard. I'll play a warrior. And how as much always. our community loves it as well. Um, so thank you for joining us. Thank you for all your hard work. Uh, stream, give us hearts for Tristan, Brian, and James, and all. Yeah, of the this was crazy good. On the environment side, on the art side, everybody had a I will watch the other We're video. Guys. Way to make this stream a reality. I will see you guys back on stream shortly. All right. See you. Bye, everybody. This is crazy. Let me link it to you guys. You all want to watch any more of it right there. Uh, as I said, this game will probably be out. Um, I, I think realistically, like, this is my guess. Obviously, you're never going to get them to commit to a time. If I had to guess, I would guess that the game will come out in, like, a year and a half to two and a half years. And I think that you'll have a playable beta or, like, alpha that people can actually see probably before the end of the year. This is like, I, I'm like, I, I don't fucking know. I'm just guessing. So we'll see what happens. Let me look right now. Seasons in the Riverland. Is this it right here? Uh, is this a video? I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. Yes, it is. Okay. So this is the actual, like, rendered trailer. Here we go. Distortion is using Elden Ringmont. Yeah, I got to look at it. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Okay, so this is the actual, like, uh, preview. Oh, yeah, yeah, let me hit it on 4. Oh, it's on 4K. We're good. All right, here we go. Let's see it. That's good, dude. That's good, dude. Imagine being in the world. Man. Oh, it's Mr. Bear. Oh, I wonder if the bear's fur changes too. If it's like, you know, how they have, uh, you know, rune bears kind of and shit, right? If like his fur changes with the color of the season too. Like, I, I, I think this looks great. I'm going to be honest. I, I think this is really, really cool. It does change? Okay. And there's the spot they just showed, yeah. I like the head that's, like, there because it creates... Uh, I think, like, having ancient ruins and, like, giant structures like that, it's the Colossus of Rhodes, you know? It, it adds, like, a, a tremendous amount of, like, uh, of depth. Because uh, you can build content off of that, and it just makes it feel like... Like it's a real world. Of scope. Yeah, scope is a better word to say it. Yeah, I, I think scope is much better. Yeah, it's strong world building and everything, man. I was right! Look, look, look! Now he... Oh, that looks good. Wow. Holy fucking shit, that looks really, really good. It's a literal horn toad. It's a horny toad. Look at him. Oh my god. Oh wow. God damn. God damn, bro. Look at that shit. Where's the gameplay? You just saw it. We had gameplay 30 minutes ago. 30 minutes. I think one thing that uh, Unreal 5 does really, really well is, like, hair. I think hair and skin is probably the biggest upgrade in Unreal 5. It looks so much better. Like, I've never seen a game that has, like, more realistic hair and, and skin than anything that's rendered in Unreal 5. Like, it, it's so, so good. Lighting, too. I feel like there are some other good, like New World, for example, uses Lumberyard and not Unreal 5, which I think Lumberyard is a fork of the, uh, of like the Crisis Engine or something like that. I, I don't know. Um, so I, I don't think that's necessarily unique, but I think the hair and skin is the most ideal.
little mushrooms too. Oh, shit, so even he changes. Wow. That's fucking crazy. Look at that, dude. I like it. I like it a lot, man. I'm gonna be honest, like, that shit with the fucking tree, bro. Like, let's watch that tree shit again. Look at this fucking tree, bro. Like, oh my god, this is good. Look at that. Damn. Look at that. I'm just gonna, I'll pause it right there just so you guys can see it. Wow, that's my, I, I like that. That's the best one, man. I think that is just so, so fucking cool. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I, I think that, like, if you want to have, like, weather, like, what would be, like, weather effects that, like, would be cool? Like, a, a tornado would be cool. Um, What if they had a thing where, like, a, a lightning could strike and it could, like, fucking set shit on fire or something like that? That would be cool. I, I think that the more, like, random events that occur the better like the like a volcano eruption where there's like lava that comes down or, or something like that any sort of like yeah a super storm like a tsunami or a hurricane or something like that uh, i i would love to see stuff like that even if it was like to some degree almost planned is it like you know because you can of course and that's not this is not unreasonable that it would be planned because you can determine whenever there's going to be like different types of uh uh what do you call it uh, different types of weather effects uh, ahead of time in real life too so like for example like what if um this i'm just like completely just like making shit up right but like what if there is like a wind god right like alakir and the wind god could only be summoned if it was like a, a hurricane and like hurricanes only happen i don't know like once a month or twice a month or something like that so like the moment that shit happens like you would be able to plan around that and you know wear certain armor or do certain stuff in order to protect yourself and like summon effectively like a wind god or you know obviously like with lava there'd be like ragnaros or something similar to that right that would be fucking fucking cool man and uh stop giving away our secrets okay steven i'm glad i'm glad to hear that that's the most reassuring thing i've heard all day that'd be so laggy i actually don't think that it will be because i thought the game was going to be laggy too whenever i played it it wasn't laggy and that was whenever it was still on unreal 4 so I don't think it's going to be laggy at all. And actually, one of the big benefits of Unreal 5 is the dynamic... I think it's called dynamic occlusion. I could be wrong about the terminology. And that's effectively what happens whenever you move far enough away from an object in the game that it removes it from an asset list that's shown to the player. So, and it dynamically decides that because of the... Uh, there's like some sort of like technology with the focal point of the camera or something like that. So, it automatically... Is it nanite? Or cull yeah, it's culling. And uh, what basically it does, it's simple. It just removes things that you're not looking at. So, actually, Unreal 5 was a tremendous gap, not only obviously in graphics, but also performance. Now, it will probably be, you know, comparatively harder to run it overall but uh it is not as big of a jump as you might guess like you guys remember back whenever like half-life 2 came out and like you needed to buy like a fucking two thousand dollar computer to play half-life 2 i don't think that's gonna happen going from like uh unreal uh four to five yo he's here mm -hmm. that's nuts he's here absolutely yeah i was uh very excited about this like honestly uh, i'm hoping it's gonna be good man i really am i am so fucking excited like MMOs, I think have such a uh, such a bright future. I, I will be totally totally honest. I think they have a very very bright future, and, and I think that you know people are asking. Like, let, let's think about this, right? People have been asking for a long time. Not not asking, but like, there's the idea of the metaverse, and I feel like this is what the metaverse is going to be. It's not going to be some, like, weird, cringy fucking bullshit where you've got a bunch of badly drawn monkeys that get together. No, it's going to be a world like this. Uh, I, I think so. The what? What? What are you trying to say? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? What the hell is the metaverse? 
So it's this thing, basically, that Bobby Kotick is trying to invent so he can make everybody his slave. What is it actually? Uh, basically, a metaverse is the idea of like a second world where NFTs and different types of non-fungible ob objects can interact with each other and people can kind of exist inside of it as like it's a second life. That's So, virtual reality basically uh well it, it virtual reality is like contingent on like wearing a headset and everything like that there's nothing about it that implies uh that you have to have like a certain type of technology it's just simply the ability to access an alternate world where different types of assets and people can exist in simultaneously so like wow yeah which came out in 2004 yeah yeah it's a new idea okay. all right it's a new crazy idea, which, by the way, Gabe said that. Gabe Newell said that. He said the exact fucking thing. He said, why are people trying to go for a metaverse? I thought we had this solved with MMOs. Like, what is this? Like, yeah, it's just, yeah, WoW is the first metaverse. I think Second Life, you've got other games like that. Uh, that's what it is, a shopping and VR chat. Yeah, yeah, you've got the shopping and VR chat stuff, etc. But the shopping and VR chat, I think the whole idea of that is just fundamentally fucking stupid. But, Yo, go ahead. if you could upload... Okay, your consciousness into an MMO, would you do it? Well, which one? Like the best it, no, just the, it, it's the your it's your perfect MMO. It's the only MMO you'd ever play for the rest of your life. It's it. That's it. There it can't be there can't be any better game. Would you would you live in it? How do you know we didn't already make that decision? What are you talking about? Are you talking like some Matrix shit right now? Is that, is that what you're implying? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, clearly, <laughs> obviously that's not reality, okay? The Matrix is a movie. It's not real. It's That's not real, okay? <laughs> now just answer the question. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Like, it, that's, a, that's a big question, man. I mean, like, I can't answer that question, like right off the top answer my, the question dude I, I mean like i don't know i'd have to like really know like I, it's like i think so yeah like are you talking about like i mean are you talking about like the black mirror episode or are you talking like a uh, sword art online see now now you're concerned because it could be like the black mirror thing where you're you're tortured for like ten thousand years right that could be crazy you want to be tortured for ten thousand years oh, man. and not and and not experience time anymore Ooh, don't know Oh, you know, Risky. it is what it is. Uh, you know, things happen. Shit, shit happens. Yeah. But like, yeah, I, I, I think that like people would want to have it uh, be able to turn it on and off. I, I think that's what it really would be. Right. And uh, to be honest, Metaverse is like Lost Ark where every island is a different game you can play using the same character. Um, yeah, it, it's yeah, I, I think that's that's one way to say it. Sure. It's like, yeah, Super Mario All-Stars. We can go and play Mario in five different games. Yeah, Metaverse got solved with Super Nintendo, guys. It's not that big of a deal, okay? And uh, so it's like MMO. Yeah, it's like an MMO, but it's life. That's effectively what they're trying to do. I think so, at least. And uh, yeah, it's just crazy. If I'm an MMO right now, the MMO is horseshit and pay to win. Yeah. And guess what? Uh, it's turtles all the way down. Because inside of that MMO, they're making more horseshit pay to win MMOs, right? That's why people were excited about Astro Creation. It doesn't have any real pay to win aspects in it that they've at least said. So that's great. And uh, hopefully that stays the case. So let me read a few comments here and see what people have to say. Absolutely sunny. I cannot wait for this game. Just a breath of the taking. I've stoked the games at this point. But Ash is incorporating so many systems to bring us into the cutting edge. The team should be immensely proud. And this is still an alpha. Amazing. What's well, actually pre alpha because alpha isn't even released. Um, I, I would definitely agree with this. And uh, or at least like NDA alpha. Um, I, I think that one really good thing that they're doing with this is that they're trying to. One of the biggest mistakes that I think MMOs make is that they don't try to be the next big MMO, they try to be the last big MMO. And I am really, really glad to see a game like this try new ideas, try something totally fucking different, try to actually move things and evolve things forward, right? Like, yeah, no innovation. I think that's why a game like Final Fantasy popped off so hard, is because Final Fantasy initially came out, A Realm Reborn was well-liked, but when did Final Fantasy really come into its own? When it stopped trying to copy WoW and like defensive stance and fucking mana and shit like this. And it just became Final Fantasy. 
And that's when it was. When you played it? No, it was before I it popped off before I played it. Let's be honest, okay? And so, yeah, it's new new ideas. I think that's what people are really waiting for. Is that people in general, and I think the audience for MMOs, and, and gaming in general, I would say, people are tired of the same shit. That's all it comes down to. Yeah, they're tired of the same shit, and that's it. I know it's a meme at this point, but the progress Star Citizen has made is really impressive. Yeah, it'll be out in probably 15 years. I'm excited. I talked to Nick about it. Yeah, uh, game looks good, but keep an open mind about it and not just positive because you're Desron. Oh, I think so for sure. I mean, I'm excited about the game. I think it's great, but I mean, it could be shitty. I mean, sure. And like, I think that the fact is that being honest about the game is actually better for the game than just saying that it's good because that's kind of what happened with New World. I, I feel like if more people were with me on New World and like we really called out the shit that was wrong with it, the game would have been way better. Like, it would have been way fucking better, and that's why I'm really mad. That's why I can't fucking, I, I can't stop thinking about this. It makes me really mad that, like, more people didn't take my side on this. And, and like, more people didn't, like, say, hey, you know, like, we totally agree with you, like, you're right. And, and like, the reason why it makes me so mad is that I know that the game could have been so much better if, if people would listen to my feedback. If they had listened to me, the game would have been better. And uh, it, it frustrated me a lot. And uh, no, chat was still wrong. It, it's not that big of a deal. Tone deaf devs. Yeah, melting ice part path. Uh, oh, the melting ice. Uh, let's see here. This one here. Uh, like I, I would say, like I really like the. Um, I I think this one's my favorite personally. I like the dark, gloomy uh, mountainsides. I think that's the coolest part, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, hundred fucking percent. And uh, do you already watch the 30-minute video of weather? Yes, I watched the entire thing. Uh, I did. Can you imagine if this is the next WoW? Yeah, of course. I think that's what a lot of people want to see. And uh, yeah, that's great. And I uh, love the weather tops in this scene. Yeah, I think it's fucking amazing. The New World devs uh, jump in chat just to say hey. Um, I think that the, the truth is that I've had nothing but positive re relations and interactions with the New World developers uh, and, and Amazon. Like, I've, I've had nothing but positive interactions with them. Like, regardless of, like, any feedback I I've given or anything that I've said, I've had nothing but positive interactions. So I, I just wish they would have listened earlier. That's all. I, I feel like it would have made the game a lot better. Yeah. A and, like, the truth is that, like, recently I haven't really had a lot of problems with, like, any of this stuff. I mean, like, even Blizzard. I mean, they, they set up the interview with me and uh, everything went incredibly well. Like, no, it actually, Blizzard's the, the same thing. Like, uh, like ob obviously, like... I had a really good relationship with like Josh, uh, like Lore, and uh, then after that, uh, Linksy came in and like she was like now my my point of contact, and I talked to her, and she's the one that helped me set up the Ian interview, and so uh, it just went incredibly well, like everything went well. Yeah, it's been completely fine. And uh, yeah, I really sure New World is a seed. Don't know if it's too late. New World will probably not be. I think that what they should do with New World is that they need to release something that is truly a effectively realm or born for the game and they should be thinking about doing that like a year or a year and a half from now because i don't think that game is like they have a lot riding on this game obviously and i think that the foundation of it is actually not that bad i think that they can make it a lot better i really do i i think that they can make it a lot better but it needs to improve in a lot of ways okay be surprised when people sit and listen to countless streams or give your honest feedback because it's uh something uh, people need to hear from time to time I mean, that's great to hear Albion online. It, it certainly fucking is. And, and like, that's the main thing is like, if you have a game and you're giving feedback on the game, players are giving feedback on the game. I think Jeff Kaplan said it the best way that you can't rely on players to tell you what the solution is, but you can rely on them to tell you if there's a problem. And what ends up happening is like uh, all of this kind of stuff happens and, and the game has the issues and players are saying it's a problem and it's not being addressed and there are solutions that are being prescribed and the developers don't want to do them. That's it. A Realm Reborn was a one-off. It's a long-established franchise. New World doesn't have the luxury to bring players back. No, I think it does. Uh, I think a lot of people are just bored. And if New World said like, hey, we're changing a bunch of stuff and like people were hyped about it, they'd, they'd play it again. Yeah, hundred percent. Enough people would play it again that that if the quality of the game was actually up to par, uh, it would still be good enough. I think you'd be surprised. Uh, I really do. 
No, you're wrong. No, I, I don't think so at all. Think about how many people come back to WoW. And you can easily say WoW is a 25-year franchise, so it's a little bit different. Um, let me think of a game that was like not that good and people just keep playing the new ones no matter what. Uh, I'd have to really think of a good comparison because WoW and Final Fantasy, you're right, are bad comparisons because they have such an established franchise. No Man's Sky? Yeah, but like, I don't know like how many people play it, etc. All I'm saying, my point is that I believe that if, uh, what do you call it? If if they re-released it and they said like, listen, we're making a lot of changes, etc. And this is a new improvement on the game. I'm pretty sure people would uh, would probably come back and try it out. I'm not saying they would play it constantly, but I think that they would try it out and just see what happens. Uh, Destiny? Yeah. I mean, I think Destiny 2 was quite popular as well.